Hey everybody, Watches Review here with a Play Arts Kingdom Hearts review. Now I've hesitated on reviewing this guy, mostly because I don't know how to pronounce his name for sure. I may have heard it several different ways, but I just watched a clip from um, the Kingdom Hearts 2 game and it seems to pronounce it Sephiroth as opposed to Sephiroth. So I'm going to go with Sephiroth for the entirety of this review. I mean, it's possibly wrong, possibly right. I don't know for sure, but please don't fault me. So to play it on the safe side, I probably won't refer to him by name very often. Now as the character is unboxed, the least I can do is show you the original packaging. And here's what the Kingdom Hearts packaging looks for this line. You'll notice it's a white box as opposed to the usual black with a character panel on the side. In addition to this really nice backdrop here, you know, with a really full image. Now to compare, here's the Avent Children's Tifa's box. It's just a black box, not much decoration, no image inside, and then, yeah, I have the Vincent from this line, I believe the box is exactly the same. Well, you know, except for the fact that the Vincent one would obviously have Vincent's pictures on it, but it comes with a stand, as most do. Uh, this part, the base connects into this, this uh, unclasps. You can hold the figure, I don't really use them. He also came with alternate hands. I believe it was a alternate open hand for the left, in addition to a closed hand for the sword for the right. Don't know where those are right now, and I usually display him without them, so. Now, as opposed to the traditional Sephiroth that we're all used to, the Kingdom Hearts version had an artistic revamp. You'll notice that the trench coat now has a red trim on it, which kind of has a nice flame effect. In addition to these fins here, which they obviously added to make the character go faster. Yeah, because that's what people add fins for. Oh yeah, plus he has a wing now. Very cool. Um, it's sort of like the parallel to Cloud, where Cloud has a left wing in the games. Although in the second game, I think they switched the uh, Advent Children look. So that may no longer be true. Although I'm not really a Play Arts fan, it's hard to not acknowledge the things that the line has done well. For one thing, the paint is very crisp and vibrant. There are also very few production errors, if any. I mean, I certainly haven't seen any yet, but... And the articulation has a fairly good range. Unfortunately, the joints do have a tendency to loosen very rapidly over time. The sculpt as well is absolutely great in some areas. I mean, other areas, I don't agree with the choices. Like, we have a really big flowing effect here with the lower portion of the trench coat. Although you do need an open trench coat for a lot of the poses, it goes really off more to one side, which I don't quite like. In addition, the hair flows out to the side. I mean, it's just minor gripes. You do have to do something with the hair just because you're accommodating a wing here, but, you know. Now, in terms of articulation, we have a rotating wrist. The hands are removable. We have a double-jointed elbow. You'll notice this little thing here. I mean, they're not pin joints, so you can't really see them on the outside, but... And then we have a ball-jointed shoulder. It's really not impeded by the shoulder bands, which is a very nice touch. You'll notice that the bands sort of go up into each other and then come down. So it's like completely separate pieces with a pretty good range. I believe they just fasten that into the shoulder on each portion. The head will rotate. I mean, obviously you won't do a full 360 with this just because the hair does sort of get into the jacket. It goes up and down a little bit, but again impeded by the wing. The wing is sort of ball jointed so you can get a um, very wide range of movement. The waist is articulated, rotates. Down at the leg we have a ball joint, good range. A kind of double jointed knee here, sort of funky. And then down at the ankle we have a forward back in addition to a side pivot which is great for posing figures like this. 
I forgot to mention that there's also a point of rotation up at the bicep, but you can't really see it underneath these shoulder plates. Now, the real downsides to this figure are the fact that the knees especially did loosen up pretty quickly, but with the stand you can sort of adjust for that. I mean, a lot of the time you do probably want him more for crouching poses, for like when he's about to strike with the sword, but... You know, I mean, different people have different ways of posing him. You can probably also pose him in some decent flying positions. Uh, the one downside is the um, stand doesn't directly peg into the wall, but you can probably rig it if you want to. Also, one of my long-standing gripes with the Play Art series is that the figures are about 8 inches tall, which means they don't really fit in well with many things. Um, on the whole, I do like this character. I wasn't planning on picking him up originally, but he came bundled with the Cloud. I think I got the, both of them for, I think it was between 30 and 40 including shipping, which you know is a pretty good price. If you already own a Play Art Sephiroth for one of the other looks, you probably won't want to pick this one up just because it's not as dynamic of a change as, say, the Cloud from Kingdom Hearts versus the Cloud from Advent Children versus the Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, but, you know, he's a very nice looking figure, no real complaints, and, you know, until next time.